right, so now we're going to use Bootstrapper. Yep, so Bootstrapper is, uh, you can use Bootstrapper. The n most common flag is dash M. Uh, I believe that stands for microservices. Um, and Bootstrapper dash M will do everything, basically. It tells, it tells Bootstrapper to get everything that you're missing, update all the repo repos up to their latest version, uh, downloads all dependencies, do, does all the pre-setup work required, and then makes your con and then turns coffee. On. Uh, it, <laughs> does it, your laundry. It, it's it, awesome. It, it will remind you to take a break for lunch if it's around lunchtime even. Oh really? It, it, it actually awesome. has a few mess. It'll actually keep track of what time it is and give you a, a time a, a reminders every once in a while. Even. That's cool. So yeah, you run dash m. It'll tell. It'll give you a warning that uh, uh, to make sure that you're all your. Uh, that you don't have any uncommitted code. So if you're using git and you got uncommitted code, don't use dash m. I will explain the other flag for that circumstance uh, after dash m is done. But yeah, so if you already have it on your machine, you've been working, yeah, just make sure everything's committed before you start it up. Before, before you use dash you m. It. Okay, yeah. before dash m, cool. So so yeah, dash m, it'll, so it'll, yeah, warns you, make sure you've got the latest uh, con stuff. Uh, conflicts, if their conflict arrives, you have to resolve the conflict manually. Uh, just say, when, will you continue? Just put Y for yes. Um, because we like you. Yeah. Why? M-I-C-K-E-Y. So after it checks the bootstrapper to see if there's any updates to that, uh, it'll again tell you SSH or HTTPS. So like I said, I've got them both set up, so I use SSH. Um, first it grabs anything that you're missing. Then it uh, grabs all the dependencies. Then uh, it does any kind of code generation required. Then it... Uh, Right now, it's going through uh, front-end uh, work uh, required, uh, going from like template files to actual files and uh, and other su stuff along those lines. Uh, copying favicons, uh, converting jo uh, jo converting JavaScript from the latest available JavaScript down to a common denominator across browsers we support, uh, etc. Um, this actually takes a little while. Um, the first time you run dash m, it will take a long time. Uh, this is just because it has to grab so much stuff. After you run it the first time, it'll be way faster because it can most of the stuff's already on your own machine. Now I was joking about the coffee, so this will probably be a good point for you to go get coffee if it's the <laughs> first time. So after it gets to about this point, actually, um, running it, it will automatically open up your web browser to localhost 8080. Um, however, the server's not started just yet, so it'll tell you to unable to connect. Um, it will also open up a second command line window. Uh, this is running a watch. So if you are running front end development, you can edit your HTML and this command line window will automatically make sure you're, you're up to date live. And yeah, so, so you, as you change stuff in your front end, in, in your front it's end. just changing the yeah, it, it'll change instantly. stuff. It, two screens, yeah. two screens, baby. Yeah, Code, two, two screens, site, yeah. look at what it's doing, right? Yep. That's the only way. Yep, so if you're not running front end, feel free to close the second window. It doesn't act, doesn't act, it's not actually required, it just helps your development work. When you close the second window, it shuts down the watch? It shuts down the watch. Okay. And the, the main window here is actually running the actual uh, website, the back, nice. the back end, nice. and uh, the front end ser serving. So once it gets down to this point, it spits out all these starting module lines. Um, at this point, the best thing to do is to go to localhost 8000. This is the uh, app engine, like, uh, local development console. Um, Should we introduce this in the next video? Probably. Yeah. So the most important bit to note just for right now though yeah. is uh, the even Bootstrapper will not show you any further information here. It just prints out to this point but it's not finished turning on yet. So you go to the localhost 8000 and it will show you a list of all the microservices uh, in the system and it'll, it'll give you an ID if there's actually a pro, uh, if that service is actually up. So right now, default is front-end. So front-end's running, but all the other microservices haven't finished turning on yet. And does it automatically pop in, or do you have to refresh? You've got to refresh. So, oh, so, so, so a few I, more are running. So, so when, there, when so, you have numbers under all those, then you're up and running. Yeah, so, so you can't actually visit the site uh, until all of them actually uh, have a number under them. Uh, so that, that can actually take several minutes. So... This is just a limitation of App Engine. App Engine slow at starting up. Right. Multiple. Pluses and minuses. Yes. Man, we've been around that block a couple ten times. times. <laughs> yes. So, 
So App Engine's got more advantages than disadvantages, but one of its disadvantages is multiple microservices on your own machine is slow. Yeah. Uh, so it'll, it'll just take a while for it to come right. on. We'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.